Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I made this Flappy Bird clone and then trained one of Unity's ML agents to be able to play the game on its own. I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. So for the first part, I'll be showing you how I set everything up. So I have a simulation game object that contains the entire simulation, and then I've made that prefab so I can have lots going on, so that when we train, we can run all these in parallel and put the agent under many different circumstances. Since the pipes are randomly spawned, if for the first agent it might be up at the top, the second one might be the bottom, and if we're running all these in parallel, the agents get to experience a lot of different variations of, you know, a high pipe then a low pipe, or, you know, two middle pipes or whatever. We want to have it experience as many different variations as possible, so I could make even more simulations if I wanted to. Um, if we head into a simulation, this is what it is. We've got two colliders, a ceiling and a floor, okay? So this is, these are just box colliders, the top, sorry, the floor has um, a mesh renderer so we can actually see it, it's not really necessary, but just makes it a bit, a bit nicer. Okay, so we've got the floor and the ceiling, this is the limits for the bird, if it hits either of them it dies, if the bird hits anything it dies, so these are the upper and lower limits, and then we also have pipes of course, so the pipe prefab, let me jump into that quickly is simply this, okay? It's just a box collider again on a pipe, and what we do is we spawn in those pipes with the pipe handler. So let me just jump back over here, pipe handler script. So we have reference to the pipe prefab for us to be able to spawn it in. We also set up the gap size, so that's the gap size between two pipes, and then the seconds between pipe spawning. Obviously we spawn some pipes, wait a little bit, spawn some more pipes. And here's the internal timer so that we can tick that down. When it reaches zero or less than zero, we actually spawn in some new pipes and reset it. And here's where we store all the pipes that are currently in that simulation. It allows us to, when we need to, when we need to reset it, just loop over the list and delete them all. So every frame, we make sure we get rid of old pipes and we spawn in new pipes. This is by no means the most optimal way of doing it. It's just a way that works. It's simple enough for this. So I loop backwards over the list of pipes and if the position, if the X position of the pipe is less than minus 15, it means it's, it's at the end. Obviously, I could make this better because if I decide to tweak the size of our simulation, then this won't work anymore or it might not work anymore. So I probably want to make this a variable or make the pipes destroy in a different way. But regardless, I destroy the game object and then remove it from the list. And then when we spawn new pipes in, we actually, first of all, tick down the timer and make sure it's ready to spawn some new pipes in. But if it isn't, we just return. But when it is ready, we then spawn in two pipes, but we make one of them flip to 180. So if I actually go to the pipe prefab again, imagine we spawned it in <coughs> and then we flipped it 180. Okay, so that's what we have basically here, 180. Okay, and then we pick a random center height between minus 1.5 and 4. Yet again, this probably shouldn't be hard coded, these should be tweaked in the inspector. So the center of a pipe or the center of two pipes can be as low as minus 1.5 and as high as 4. And once we've picked that position, I then do two translates to make the top pipe, you know, move up a little bit and the bottom pipe move down a little bit or whatever. So we eventually get something looking like this, where the gap size is equal to the gap size we set up in the editor. Okay, so whatever we set it to be. Uh, let me actually get rid of this. This is just a visual representation. If we go to the pipe handler, I set it up to be, for example, four. So there'll be four units of space between those two pipes. And then once they've both been spawned in and, tr and, and moved, I add them to the list. And then I reset the spawn timer so we can keep going and going and going. If I press play now, you'll see the uh, pipe handler in action, though the birds will just fall through the floor because I removed their code. I'll be re-adding the code on camera so you guys can see how it works. But you see the pipes, you know, they get their height and they pick a random height between minus 1.5 as the center and a max of, I think it was four. Okay, and then they go to the end, they get destroyed, they spawn back in, move across. Okay, the actual moving of the pipes is a simple pipe script that just says every single frame move a certain amount. And that's the entire setup apart from the bird, the agent itself, so let's look into that. So the bird is also a prefab, okay, and here's what it looks like. So the actual model is just something I quickly chuck together in Blender, okay, so here's, here's the model for the bird. And then the actual bird prefab itself, okay, what do we have on it? Well, we have a bird script that I haven't written yet. I have written it, but obviously I've removed the code so I can show you guys how it's made. Um, this is an agent, so make sure your bird class inherits from agent so it can use ML agents. And that's what gives it this max step and this line here. Okay, so we'll come back to the bird to code it later. We have a sphere collider, as you can see, roughly matches the size and shape of the bird. So that's what we detect whether it hits the ground or the ceiling or the pipes. We then have a rigid body to make it fall down, and then we can add a force as the jump to go back up. Okay, the settings are as you see here. I've just removed the drag and I've changed interpolate to be from none to interpolate. 
And then down here we have all the ML agent scripts. So the first one is where the, the brain is effectively. So the behavior parameters will actually be added for you, I think, when you make this an agent. Uh, the behavior parameters, you have to give this a name. The name, it has a default name. I've changed it from uh, my behavior to flappy test. And this is actually the name you use in your config file when setting it up. So I'll show you that when we get to it. Um, observations, so observations are the inputs. Uh, normally, if you were in your code passing in inputs, you would set this. But because I'm actually going to be using their built-in ray perception sensor, I don't have to set this. It's done for me. So we can leave that as zero. And over here for the actions, so the actions are the outputs. Okay, I simply have one output and it's discrete instead of continuous. So discrete and continuous just basically means whole numbers or floating point numbers. So because it's discrete and the branch size is two, it basically means it's going to output to us every single time we request an action, either a zero or a one. Okay, so it's a size of two where the values are over zero or one. And the model, this is normally null. You guys can leave it null. Once you've trained a model, this is where you put it in to just have it play. Okay. And then CPU, we'll leave it on CPU because for GPU, I think you need a whole setup and I'm not aware of how to do that just yet. And um, we can leave everything else on defaults here. The decision requester is how many frames do we wait before making a new action? So now the action in our case doesn't mean every single frame we jump. It just means every single frame we decide should we jump or not. Okay, so that's by default five, but I've put it down to one simply because I found I got better results with one. Obviously, it'll be slightly worse performance doing it on one than it will be five, but um, it's definitely worth it to get the extra quality out of the actual simulation. And then finally, the ray perception sensor. This is the, the uh, observations. This is the input. As you see over here, we've got all these ray casts with then sphere casts on the end. So here are all the settings for that. I don't think I've actually tweaked it that much. Uh, the way I've managed to get it vertical, I mean, by default, it's not vertical. So if I put my rotation back to zero, this is what it's normally like. Um, it's on this kind of plane. But for what I needed, I actually needed it 90 degrees to the side. And there was no way down here to actually tweak that unless I'm blind. So uh, the way I did that is by rotating the game object. How many rays I've tweaked around? I've tried different numbers. I've tried five. I tried 10. Somewhere in between works just fine. Um, so obviously, that's just the number of ray casts we do. The amount of data that goes in the more data that goes in the longer it'll take to train it and like the slower it'll be but you know technically the better results you'll get in the end in most cases um max degrees 90 works well we don't care about stuff behind us in fluffy bird but we definitely care about stuff right above and below us because obviously we don't want to hit the ceiling or the floor and then the sphere cast radius i'm not really entirely sure what this does um i mean you could probably just get away with having perfect ray casts by saying this to be zero i'm pretty sure you can uh yeah set to zero for raycast um i think this works well i think all it means is that when it hits something you can get the data of the surrounding area um but this works just fine on 0.5 and then the ray length just make sure it's long enough so that it actually hits the ceiling and the floor and that it hits the pipes when they're coming in so then obviously you can read all that data and then stacked raycast we don't need and we don't want to tweak this offset at all and just be a bit random to do so and the debug colors are up to your discretion and then finally, we'll be coding the bird class as the actual agent we need to train. So first of all, we need some references. So we need reference to the rigid body to add some force, reference to the pipe handler, because the agent in here is where we're going to have a reset method. So when we reset the agent back to the start, reset the velocity, we also want to reset all the pipes. So we need reference to the pipe handler. Equally, you could do it the other way around and have an event raised in here and have the pipe handler listen in. That's technically better design, but yet again, for a simple ML agent test, I don't really care. And then um, for the actual uh, transform here, this body transform is purely visual. It's so that the bird, when it's falling, when it's going up, the rotation changes to make it look a bit cooler. So unless you, if you don't care about that, then you don't have to bother with this part. And then some settings here, the jump force and the max velocity. So obviously um, the bird might decide it needs to jump multiple times to go up, up, up. But we don't want it to, you know, add force, add force, add force, and start flying really high off the screen. In Flappy Bird, um, I'm pretty sure there's a, you know, velocity cap. So we just make sure whenever we add velocity, we cap it at five or a magnitude of five. And then we also need a starting position to be cached. So that's the last variable. Okay. We need this so that whenever we die and we restart, we need to get, know where to go back to. So I think it's recommended when using ML agents, if you need to put stuff in either a normal start or awake method to put it in the initialize method. Um, so this is called by the ML agent. So they probably do their own stuff in start or awake uh, in, the, in the base class. And then 
they pass it up to here. So once they've done their start or they're awake, we then get our initialize called. And then all I do is I just cache the starting position. So as I said, whenever we die, we reset our position back to here. On episode begin is basically the reset method. This is where we want to reset everything. So when we die, we end the episode and then we start a new episode. So whenever we start a new one, reset our position, reset our velocity and reset the pipes. And as I showed earlier, this is a method in the pipe handler. Um, I actually didn't show this method, I showed the others. All it does is loop over the pipes, destroy the game object, clear the pipes list, reset the timer. So just reset everything basically. And here's the jump method, it's pretty simple. We just add an upwards force to the rigid body. And then after we've added that force, we make sure to clamp the magnitude of the velocity so that we don't have it going too high. And then if you've watched my previous uh, ML agents videos, you'll recognize this method on action received. This is where we um, receive actions from the ML agent. So we don't call this method, they call the method or the agent calls the method. And it passes through either a zero or a one, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so what we need to do is I think um, I'm pretty confident it'll come through as a zero or one, but we should still round it anyway, just to be sure. So first of all, this is called every frame or every fixed update frame uh, while the agent is running. So we want to reward it, okay? We're basically saying, here's some points for surviving, okay? We want to reward it for surviving and punish it for dying. So here's some points, you survived a frame. And then we take in this action. So if it's not one, return, because we want to basically say one is jump. Now equally, I could say if it's equal to one and then, you know, do uh, this and then put jump in here. It's just the way I like to write things. Uh, I don't like to have indents with if statements if I don't have to. Okay, so if uh, the action is not a one, whoops, uh, if the action is not a one, then return, but if it is a one, then jump. Jumping is here, of course. And then the heuristic method is to allow us to test our own game without running the agent or training it. So this allows us to basically say, um, we can pass out the float array, we can modify the values in it, and then they get passed into here. So normally this is done automatically, but we can actually do it ourselves. So we basically say uh, the value is zero, but if we uh, press the space key, then set it to one, okay? So we're just saying space means jump, okay? So up here, we add a reward, as I said earlier, we add some points when we uh, survive a frame. We also want to uh, give some negative points when, when it dies. So whenever it collides with something, so that can be the ceiling, the floor, or the pipes, we uh, reduce some points, we take off some points, and we end the episode, which then in turn calls start episode, or on episode begin, and resets everything and gets going again. Um, the actual value of the rewards don't really matter too much unless you've got multiple things giving rewards, in which case they're relative to each other. So if you have two things you want the agent to do that are good, but one of them's better than the other, then you obviously want to give that many more points. Um, but when you just have good and bad, I don't think it really matters. Someone might correct me on this, but I know it works just fine how it is like this. And then by calling end episode, as I said, that resets everything. Then finally, the update method is purely for visuals. As I said, it's to rotate the, the body just to show you that it's dipping down and then when it jumps, it goes back up. So all we do is we say rotate to look in the direction that our velocity is going in. So if we're going up, it's up and down, it's down. But because the bird is actually, it's only moving up and down, it's not moving to the right at all. Obviously, you get that illusion just because the pipes are moving to the left. The bird is actually staying still. So if we just use look rotation without this vector here, what actually happens is when the bird goes up, it snaps to facing the ceiling. When it goes down, it snaps to facing the floor. So I have to add some imaginary, uh, like imaginary velocity in the in the x direction, which isn't actually there. But because I say it is, it looks like it's moving in that direction. So it's all about faking it to make it look good. Um, then transform the up. I don't even know if this part was necessary, but I added it and it worked. So I'm happy. It's just visuals. And this is the important stuff, all the ML agent stuff up here. Okay, uh, we're actually ready to train now. So remember last time, uh, if you've got the config here, okay, these are all the configs set up for the ML agents examples that Unity made. So here are the default settings. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all these setting values. I don't know what every single one does, but you can actually find the explanations on their GitHub. And then you can override it for certain projects. So in Food Collector, some of the values are different. And the only one I've changed for what we're doing is if I go back to the bottom, in flappy test, okay, I've set the max steps to be 1.0 e to the 6. By default, it's, I think, 5.0 e to the 5. Uh, e just means times 10 to the, if you've done the maths before. And this is just how many frames it's going to simulate before the training is done. So I've doubled it from 5 to the 5 to uh, 1 to the 6, okay? And that's really up to you to test around with. My uh, training of the Flappy Bird isn't perfect. It actually does fail every so often. It hits pipes, 
It just hasn't been trained enough, or I maybe have to tweak some parameters slightly. It's still pretty pretty damn good, but it's not perfect. So um, there are definitely ways I can improve the training, but um, increasing the actual training duration does help quite a bit. If we head over to the bird prefab, drag in the rigid body, drag in the model as the transform. Then if we go back over here, okay, and then we can say in the simulation for the bird, uh, the pipe handler is the pipe handler. I've actually already got it set up there. Cool. And now what we can do is we can go train it. So to train it, oops, let's go back here. Okay. Open up um, a command prompt in your assets folder, like so. I'm going to just go back. I already have the command now. Um, I can't put my ID as flappy test because I already actually have, um, if I go over here, models flappy test. So I'm going to have to pick a new name. But the actual command is mlagents-learn space. The, and then the path to config, which is config slash trainer underscore config dot yaml. And the command is dash dash run dash id equals, and then the name you want to call this one, so flappy test YouTube. Now, just keep in mind, guys, if you haven't followed my previous videos or if you haven't done ML agents before, you actually do need to install Python and get the right packages set up for this. I covered that in one of my two previous videos. Um, I'd recommend watching both of those if you're wanting to get into ML agents and have a go yourself. Uh, but let's give it a run. Okay, assuming I've done this right, it'll take a second and it'll tell us when it's ready to press play in the Unity editor. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the entire training process because it'll take quite a while. Um, so yeah, start training by pressing play in the editor and press play. And the kind of stuff we'll start to notice is that they just randomly do things. Now, it might look really laggy. It's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Everything is just sped up. The simulation speed is really high. Um, so right now, I'll, I'll commentate on it for a little bit, but obviously it might, it'll take ages to do. So. Um, the brain is taking in the information from the raycasts. If we actually go to, for example, the first simulation, all this raycast data has been sent in to the agent and it's been processed effectively randomly at the start. The agent is just trying different things. And at the end of the day, after processing all that data, it just spits out either a zero or a one, okay? Now it doesn't know what zero one means. It just, you know, says this data means zero, this data means one. And then right now it's getting a lot of ones and it's just like hitting the ceiling over and over and over again. And it's obviously getting a reward based on how long it lives for. For the more frames it survives for, the more points it gets. So it then eventually realizes if it doesn't jump, it doesn't hit the ceiling. And because it doesn't hit the ceiling, it survives longer. Okay, that's a good thing. So then it ends up realizing when there is something close on my top raycasts, I should stop jumping. So eventually it learns not to hit the ceiling. And it kind of has the same effect on the ground. It learns um, when I hit the ground, that's bad. So when there's stuff uh, below me on the raycast getting close, it means that obviously the floors there don't don't touch it. So it starts to jump. And then it eventually will be pretty good at just avoiding the ceiling or the floor. But then obviously the complexity is with the pipes. Now you'll start to notice the birds are getting a lot closer to the pipes. The birds are actually passing a few of the pipes already. If you look back in the console, you can actually see the mean reward of the agents. So it started off as two. 2.5, 2.6, 2.9, 3.2, 4.3, 5.9. 2, uh, you might get to a point where it slows down. And as I said, the longer you train it for, usually the better. And there are definitely some ways I can improve the simulation itself. But over time, the, uh, the birds, the agents, will get much better at playing the game. Now, this is going to take forever to, to train. So I'm actually just going to stop it and skip ahead and show you my already trained model and what it looks like. If I jump into the bird prefab, you see down here, I actually have the flappy test model. We also have the flappy test YouTube model. Um, it's not here actually because I just, you know, basically cancelled it and broke it, but that's because I didn't actually want to sit here and wait for it to finish. Uh, so if I go back, yeah, models, Flappy Test YouTube, don't care. Um, but make sure that when you're ready and when you're done, your model is the actual test model. And then if we press play, they should all be running on that model. So they're not going to be perfect to the game, but they're going to be pretty good. You know, sometimes they'll fail if it's a really high pipe or really low pipe or a really high, then a really low. But for the most case, they get through the pipes pretty well, okay? And it looks pretty cool and it's pretty entertaining to watch. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks always for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my Patreon. Special thanks to Taylor Rustio, Francisco Lira, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Ansican, Sam Marcus, Matt Fryer, Ellen, Fabian Renault, Malvin, Samran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Beard I, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, and Rene. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our Udemy course and our website, 
If you could check any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.